Witness the clashes, the chaos, and the downright shocking behavior of chefs who not only burnt their dishes but also ignited the wrath of the fiery chef Gordon Ramsay. From explosive outbursts to jaw-dropping insubordination, these unforgettable moments will have you on the edge of your seat. Let's begin with what Gordon's protege and indispensable right-hand woman, Christina Wilson, has named his angriest moment ever. You're trying to clown me up in here right now. Come here. You're trying to clown me in here right now. Come here. I gave you the lead, chef. All of you, come here, all of you, come here, all of you. Well, damn, that was just crazy. According to Christina, she's never seen Gordon lose his temper like this in a service. Might not have heard about this, and it's definitely not the glamorous side of the show, but there's actually a lawyer from Fox who's always on set whenever they're filming. Whether it's a challenge or a dinner service, these dudes are always stationed at the studio, at all times as well. That's mainly to make sure everything is on the up and up, and Gordon doesn't go too far. Either way, sometimes shit does get real, and believe me, you'd rather have that backup and not need it rather than the other way around. You see, the prize money is legit. It's all as straight and fair as a game of blackjack, and the battle for it can sometimes turn into an all-out war. But what made Gordon this mad? Well, let me give you a quick recap, people. Let's cut to the time when Jen Gavin returned to season 18 as a veteran. You see, this was her chance to redeem herself, but man, did she fumble that bag. During the dinner service in episode 3, she was at the garnish station claiming something big. Being a leader in the kitchen is definitely not something that's foreign to me. Four minutes to the window, guys. Her bubble was burst by sous chef Jockey almost immediately when he rejected her potatoes for being bland. And that must have surely mashed her ego. Who writes this stuff? Naturally, Jen's defensiveness kicked into high gear. She insisted she tasted them, that they were seasoned to perfection, but what really escalated things was when she made a claim as audacious as this. Past that ruined his palate, but the food had enough salt in it. Hey, I mean, I guess he just wants to put these people in cardiac arrest. Young lady. All right, your royal highness. Nobody's palate is refined as yours. Praise be to Princess Potato. Either way, maybe that's why Gordon called her over for round two. Jen was bitter as all hell, asking what she did wrong this time, and oh boy, did that light a fire under Gordon's temper. What, who do you think you're talking to? This is to? so bland. This is so bland. What's more, the mashed potatoes were rejected for being bland. Again. That's when Heather tried them, found them disgusting, and told Jen to add some pepper. Can't go wrong with good old salt and pepper. While Jen managed to keep things moving a bit, it wasn't long until she fell behind again by not communicating with her teammates, T and Brett. But this is when things got worse. As if arguing with T wasn't enough, she started playing the victim. And it's all gravy, man. I'm definitely the oddball out the group. So, of course, whenever anything happens in our kitchen, it's Jen, Jen, Jen. She then sent out way too few leaks for two duck dishes. Gordon, whose anger was only building, showed the underfilled pan to her and the veterans. However, she continued to insist she sent enough leaks and accuse him of sabotage. If you come threw in. that under there, I gave you, you enough leaks. You trying to clown me up in here come right I, now. Come you. I, no, you trying come to clown in. me I, in here right now. Damn. Really wish he hadn't done that, but um, the cojones on her, you know? Either way, this made Gordon really angry and he dropped the pan in frustration. He demanded that Jan hand over her chef's jacket and ordered her to take the elimination walk right through the front door. And did she take the hint, walk away with some dignity? Nah. As she left, Jen doubled down, accusing Gordon of conspiracy and disrespect, but Gordon wasn't taking the bait. Are you ready? You set me Where? up! I'm steady bringing you Who set you up? And you throw the pan You're on making an excuse. You're, You're lying. Throughout the situation, Jen's arrogance and refusal to take any amount of responsibility annoyed Gordon to hell and back. She kept making excuses, blaming everyone around her, even when Gordon and her teammates disagreed. To point the finger at Gordon in his own kitchen, no less, is absolutely insane. Viewers have rightly pointed out how horrifying it is and how rattled Gordon was. But it shows how much he respects the industry and his chefs, and when someone messes with either, they better be prepared to face his wrath. In an interview, Christina also confessed that Gordon can handle a lot of criticism head on, meaning it face to face without flinching. However, when it comes to attacking his integrity or his show's integrity, one that stood strong for 22 seasons and played a big role in building his success in the US, something changes. Those who work on the show can vouch for the tremendous effort that Gordon and everyone else involved put into it day in and day out. Really, it wasn't just a personal insult for him. It felt like an affront to the rest of his crew, too. 
This incident marked the first and only time she ever witnessed his integrity being questioned. Jason Underwood, in the high stakes culinary battleground of Hell's Kitchen where talented chefs compete for the ultimate prize, there have been some memorable failures. But among them, one chef stood out as a true culinary catastrophe, Jason. From his lackadaisical approach to his disastrous kitchen performance, Jason proved time and time again that he was a horrible fit for the intense world of Hell's Kitchen. Is there anyone out there who thinks otherwise? Right from the start, Jason's lack of dedication and passion to cooking were clear. During the signature dish challenge, Gordon mints no words in criticizing Jason's lackluster creation, comparing it to something tinned in a can. Passes passes something tinned in a can. Remember that? Pretty insulting, right? While the other contestants showcased their skills and ambition, Jason's mediocrity was a red flag from the get-go. But hey, not a sin to have mediocre skills. The red flag here is the fact that he seems to be wasting a golden opportunity that others would kill for. Throughout the competition, Jason's lack of commitment became increasingly apparent. During one dinner service, Gordon called out the first ticket, but Jason was nowhere to be found. What the heck? Where was he? I can't get it when he puts me on the spot like that, dude. I can't Yeah, my man was casually smoking and picking his toes, showing complete disregard for the demanding kitchen environment or his fellow chef. And you know what? When the entire team was counting on coordinating and cooperation to bring them to victory, his behavior was definitely out of line. Even during his plea for survival, Jason lacked the fire and determination that Gordon sought in a true chef. Nervous, I don't, I don't know why. I'm trying to break out of that. I'm doing a little better each day. Jeez, makes you wonder, how did he even make it this far? His inability to push through challenges and strive for improvement ultimately led to his elimination, and thank God for that. Then came the moment where Gordon asked the teammates to choose a nominee and state the reason for it. And what one of the teammates had to say wasn't a surprise. Jason. For what reason? I think Jason has trouble with cooking skills. His dismal performance and indifferent attitude made him a liability in the kitchen, and Gordon's decision to send him home was completely justified. Uh, but wait for it, because what Jason said next was totally out of this world. No, I didn't do that good on desserts, but I ran my ass off trying to help everybody today. Did he just say that? Damn, after all that went down, I can't believe he still had the nerve to say that he had so much to prove. After all the disrespect he threw his team's way, I'd have just walked away, personally. It isn't just about the team as a whole, but the respect that every single one of those chefs deserves, and Jason missed the mark by more than a mile. Despite all that, unfortunately for Jason, that passion never ignited, and his time on Hell's Kitchen came to a disappointing end. But I've come to think of it, had his attitude been any better, do you think he would have stayed in the competition for longer? Let me know in the comments below. But believe it or not, we're just getting started. I mean, really, how can we forget about this? My ass, get off no, my back. back! Get off your get back! Get off my back! You're busting my ass! You're you lying. know I am! Oof boiled over real quick, didn't it? So in the sixth episode of season six, we have Tennille assigned to the garnish station. There came a moment when she prepared more spinach than they needed. Gordon wasn't pleased and gave her an earful for her trouble, even going so far as to call her this. Well, wake up! Yes, chef. Wake up! Yes, chef. Cook the spinach to order, you lazy cow! Now, this obviously ticked her off. She bit back, saying that Gordon should learn a thing or two about showing respect, especially considering how hard she was working. Ooh, easy there. Could have made you quit the competition right then and there, but for some reason Gordon decided to give her another chance. However, sometime later her mashed taters stuck to the pot and weren't enough for a two-person portion. Add some pepper. Tennille did make it clear that she didn't want to serve extra portions like last time and was just frustrated as hell. Something to bitch about. And what do you want me to do? Gordon, however, accused her of taking the situation too lightly. No oh, cool, an act for you. Let me just tell you something. You act pathetically. That wasn't enough. He ended up calling her crap and it pissed her off even more. Her crap. And that comment left her teammates in shock. Well, they weren't alone. Props to Danielle for standing up for herself, and I mean, not everyone has it in them to look Gordon of all people in the eye. But Gordon was through with the entire situation and ejected her from the kitchen over it. Fuck you! That takes some serious balls. But you know what? Things did not simmer down there. In the backstory, he and Tennille got into it again. He warned her not to use such derogatory language towards him unless she wanted to take a one-way trip through the front doors. But Tennille wasn't about to back down now. You can't take it! I matter! Just let me in the kitchen! Just let me in the kitchen! This was actually genius, as it was straightforward and cutting and made Gordon realize that she had so much passion and fight left in her. He definitely saw something in her, otherwise he would have eliminated her on the spot for pulling something like this. He's ejected people for far less. After all, remember Zacky Wacky? A Redditor asked if Jaden's meltdown was worse than Daniil's, and for most people in the thread, it's a definite yes. One of them pointed out how Gordon actually thought about sending Tanil home after their big argument. But here's the thing, Tanil has always shown a lot of passion and a fiery spirit to boot. 
Sometimes that strong personality of hers rubbed people the wrong way. On the other hand, Jen didn't seem as fiery to me, and it looked like she was in Hell's Kitchen mostly to prove herself. Another thing, and Gordon might have figured this out too, is that Jen is a big hypocrite. I remember a ton of times in season four when she either messed up her teammates' efforts or cheated outright during challenges. Things got tough, she took the easy way out time after time, so when she started blaming Gordon for sabotaging her, he probably had a massive sense of deja vu. Even though both made it to the final tour, Tanil's intentions always seem more honorable than Jen's. Anyway, what are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, I hope you're ready for this next moment. But I'm not this face chef! This one had me like, so you've chosen death. Giovanni's comeback to Gordon calling him a dick face during the dinner service in the 10th episode of season five led to a rather rage-filled explosion of epic proportions. I said, I'm not dick face Yeah, you're pissed, are you? I'm not Look at me, look at me, eyes! Not as pissed as I am! Giovanni was working at the meat station. With just six contestants left, he understood that the whole service had to go smoothly from one kitchen and only the best would make it through. The pressure must have gotten to him as we see him opening and closing the convection oven repeatedly. Gordon sternly warned him that this might lead to trouble later. And later on, he sent out Ben's chicken special, but it had a raw drumstick on it. He asked for a minute to redo it, admitting he wasn't sure how to make the dish right. His next attempt still ended up with a half-eaten drumstick on the plate? Ew. That's when Gordon pointed out that Giovanni was ruining Ben's dish. Has now become not very special, thanks to dick face there. Hurry up, Giovanni! Yeah. And that's where it all began. Gordon's fury blazed like a fiery storm as he landed so close to Giovanni's face that it seemed like his anger could scorch the very air between them. Um, ah. No. Had it been for me, I'd have been absolutely shattered. I dug myself a hole, grabbed the chicken stick, and never come out of it. Uh, take your jacket. I'm Yes, Chef! He was eliminated at the end of this episode. Apart from his mistakes and talking back at Gordon, it was the huge health hazard he caused that sealed his fate. Oh, I in. Robert sustained a second degree burn thanks to Giovanni, who kept a 500 degree pan uncovered in the cooler and forgot to tell anyone about it. You, 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 you're gone. While he had a disastrous run that season, he came back in season 17 and did win some hearts here and there. People were rooting for him, and some even wrote that his elimination during the Cook For Your Life challenge was unfair and that Robin should have gone home instead of him. What do you all think, though? Either way, up next is this contestant that takes a trophy for fastest elimination in the history of the show. Fuck your back, man. Get out! Yes! Honestly, think Louie didn't have a promising start. Far from it. His signature dish was spat out for tasting like dirt, and then during dinner service, he was caught putting raw lamb in the oven without seasoning or even searing it first. Yeah, definitely not the kind of star you'd want in a competition as cutthroat as this. About an hour into the busy dinner service, the blue team had managed to serve appetizers to eight tables, but Louie was caught cooking spinach, which was, let me remind you, Joseph's job. When Gordon asked why, Louie said he thought he should put all the parts of the dish together. Not a great excuse there, Louie. Gordon got serious and told him to leave the spinach alone, pointing out the problems they were having with the lamb. A little later, Louis finally got his lamb dish to the pass, but that didn't stop Gordon from finding something to blow up over. Did you bite that? Look! That's one! That's the other! It's typical not to laugh at that comment, but it hit Louis the wrong way, and he definitely wasn't laughing. The same table! Things got even messier. Gordon exploded when he saw a big pile of wasted lamb at the meat station. Grabbed the pile, dumped it all over the station, demanding to know what Louis was thinking. You know, you can expect the worst when his voice starts going up a couple of octaves like that. Look! 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 What the fuck is this? This comment pretty much sums up the entire situation and why you should not be testing Gordon's patience. Goes like, when Gordon screams, fear for your life. And when Gordon's voice breaks, fear for your bloodline. Couldn't have put it better myself. Know what though? Reminds me of something that happened in the same episode with Melinda when Gordon kept pulling out Capellini from a bottomless abyss. Look! Look! What the f Hey, madam, how much capellini are you throwing away? Turns out she trashed every bit of that undercooked pasta. But that amount of food waste may as well have been a personal insult directly at Gordon. So he had something important to ask. Who's putting all this in the bin? 
her reaction? Hilarious, I'll tell you that much. She was too dumbfounded to speak, and it's crazy how Gordon went from shock to anger in just a matter of seconds. Heck, even a Ferrari would have trouble going from 0 to 60 faster than that. Anyway, moving from one outburst to another, in the next episode, Gordon shoot out this contestant for not only ignoring his orders, but just being absolutely clueless. Moods, huh? I don't Absolute like being nature. ignored in my own fucking kitchen. Yes, chef. What's going? I have no idea, chef. Oh my. You gotta be kidding me. Andrea. Get this. Gordon approached Andrea and asked her to repeat his instructions, but she couldn't remember what he had just said. Robert understood that the garnish station needed to be ahead by 30 seconds, and he realized that if Andrea didn't know the orders, they were in trouble, and my man was right. Gordon didn't hold back, called her out for not knowing what she was doing, a problem that seemed to happen often. Heck, he even asked everyone else to repeat the order, but it turned into a mess as everyone struggled to remember it. Gordon's frustration kept growing, and he had to call out the order again. Chicken, one lamb, one... Dory. Yeah. See that clench, John? Annoyed tone? Yeah, a little bit of veins here. Man, he was pissed. Despite his efforts, Andrea still couldn't repeat the order back to him. Andrea, you sweet little cinnamon bun. Come on. Chef. You have no idea. I have no idea. Hey, chef. come here, you. Hey. That was the last straw for Gordon. Kicked her out of the kitchen, right in front of the diners. Hey, hey madam. Through the door there. Oh. Embarrassing. And when she was heading out through the front door, ready to leave, Jean-Philippe intervened, stopped her, and encouraged her to stand up and fight back instead. Ah, classic JP. Always ready to give two cents right in the thick of it all. But here comes someone whose blunder was so colossal that it left Gordon at a loss for words. Roseanne! Yes, chef. Not good enough. Here, we don't see his usual fiery self. Guy was just slumped at a quarter, looking totally dejected. All because he realized how clueless Roseanne was. To begin with, as the red team moved on to the serving entrees, things got pretty messy. She ended up sending out some seriously runny mashed potatoes. Why are mashed potatoes such a central theme today? Either way, it completely set Gordon off. He was beyond furious, totally flipped out. Oh, they've gone. Get away. The lamb Wellington's already gone matters into his own hands and basically did her job himself, pushing her away. But even when she tried again, her mashed potatoes were lacking salt. Add some pepper. And well, by then he had had enough. Another moment was quick to follow where we saw him in absolute despair. What we got here is a classic try not to laugh challenge that's a difficult level impossible. So what exactly happened? Well, let's revisit this meltdown caused by none other than the infamous Jason Underwood. First of all, can we talk about how Gordon's warning to not indulge in the desserts? It's like dangling a candy bar in front of a toddler and saying, don't you dare take a bite or i swear to god i'll disown you when he quizzed him about the menu we saw jason crumble to pieces so gordon sent him off to the dorms to read up on the dessert menu and get his act together after a pep talk from la rose jason got back into the kitchen but ramsey wasn't done with him just yet he pulled jason aside to test him again on the desserts and this time jason managed to get it right in theory he passed but when it came time into practice he failed he started to prepare his first desserts but did not know what he was doing ah oh, thank you i totally understand now thankfully la rose helped him by telling him that his creme brulees were ready, which he didn't believe. When he took his souffles out of the oven, he said they looked like muffins stuck in a cup. When Gordon asked him for a status update, he told him about the problem and suggested to do this. The suggestion was so hideous that I think Gordon started questioning his entire life at that. Much like what happened in this clip. Remember Jeff from season one? Remember how he had to leave due to an ankle injury? You'd be surprised when I tell you what caused it. Third episode of the first season, we find Jeff stationed at the appetizer section. He delivered two lobster spaghetti dishes, one last lobster and the other had an excess. In response, Michael stepped in to assist in remaking the dish. Jeff attributed the mishap to his lack of experience on the line, which ignited heated tensions with Sue's chef, Marianne, and Chris. Hey, you. I'm doing the best I can. I've shouting. never been on a line before. Right, I'm okay. doing the Stop best shouting. I can. Stop shouting. However, his fortunes took a turn, and he did manage to impress the critics in the dining room with his revamped lobster sketty. Later, he approached Gordon and requested five minutes for the lamb dish. Gordon, visibly frustrated, corrected him, stating he had initially asked for four minutes. Gordon admonished him for not adhering to the instructions and thereby delaying the service. Jumped up. I just stuffed the dying room. Gordon ordered him to speed up and get his act together when it came to his teamwork. During another encounter, Gordon questioned whether Jeff was in control of his station or if Michael was effectively managing it for him. Jeff responded that Michael had influenced his work, and Gordon criticized his declining performance as the competition progressed, but was reminded that it was Jeff's first time on the line. Gordon took Jeff aside to address his attitude. After the discussion, Jeff told Chris that he had reached his limit, but Chris attempted to convince him to stay. Jeff affirmed his commitment, but retorted under his 
breath, referring to Gordon as well. Uh, I, you know, I'm just gonna let him say it, actually. Unfortunately for Jeff, sous chef Marianne overheard his comment and prompted Gordon's attention. You think she was acting like a teacher's pet? Well, a ton of comments pretty much said that. I do think she did the right thing. When Gordon called Jeff over, urging him to repeat his disrespectful remark aloud, he did this. Oh, oh my god, enough of it. Ah, he Quit. Aren't you the same person who said something totally different just a few seconds ago? I'm not a quitter. You're not a quitter. Well, of course, Gordon did fire back. Now, many viewers didn't like Gordon's snarky little comment here. Why? Because according to them, it was a harsh thing to say while Jeff was in such a vulnerable state, and it not only crushed his spirit, but made him quit too. What do you think? Make sure to drop your thoughts in the comments below. Now, according to John Douglas, a former producer on the show, here's what happened behind the scenes. Brace yourselves, it's kind of funny and kind of chilling. After his walk of shame, Jeff decided to talk to Gordon about how he was treated. He went backstage to a hallway near the kitchen where Gordon was standing. This area didn't have cameras, but Gordon did have a mic on. That way the control room could hear but not see what was happening. Jeff who was very angry walked up to confront Gordon and Gordon was on a race step leading to another room when Mr. Hothead got too close, almost touching faces with Gordon. This surprised Gordon and he turned around, made Mr. Quitter step back and BAM! Twisted both of his ankles and his screams alone were enough to prove it! Back in the control room they could only hear someone approaching Gordon while yelling and threatening, following the sound of that person falling and screaming pain. Since Gordon was in great shape it was easy to guess who took the fall. Luckily there were medics and safety officers backstage and they helped the person who fell. John added saying, his ankles were fine, but I'm sure that his ego suffered a massive bruising that probably still exists today. Meanwhile, what this next chef did in the super intense environment of Hell's Kitchen was no way better than what Jason did. Johnny McDevitt stood out as a bully and misogynist during the 16th season. He made snarky comments and showed a lack of respect for fellow contestants, particularly targeting his hate toward women. Despite boasting about his cooking skills, Johnny's performance was lackluster throughout the competition. One notable incident involved him belittling Kimberly and Ryan's almost perfect dish, revealing his disdain for talented female chefs. Remember this moment when he so unabashedly let his feelings loose? What the hell just happened? Who taught her to cook like that? It's really annoying when like cute little girls cook really well. Ah, oh, Johnny, did you say that out in the open in front of all those cameras and viewers at home? Well, karma did strike back as Kimberly emerged victorious and landed a prestigious head chef position in Las Vegas. You all should have seen how confused Johnny looked. He totally deserved it, no argument. However, Johnny's unapologetic behavior did not end there. He openly admitted to being a bully on TV, indifferent to the millions of viewers who disliked him. He made Jessica Boyton cry after she celebrated her team's victory, unable to handle his own defeat gracefully. Way over the line there. Here comes more alarmingly disrespectful words from a man who should have been a gentleman all along. Why you even look at me? Like, just stop talking to me for the rest of season. Who talks like that? Oh, and guess what? There's even more. In another episode, he attempted to break Kimberly's spirit, but she fearlessly confronted him, proving herself stronger than his bullying tactics. Johnny was most certainly a lost cause. Come on, man. It's so old school and gross to treat women as nothing but objects that anyone can trample on. Johnny would have never imagined that Kimberly would come out stronger than ever, and guess what? He got the taste of his own medicine. Respect little people and stop trying to rip on people because you feel I can't tell you how proud I am for her speaking up, but Johnny's poor attitude also extended to his teamwork abilities, resulting in disastrous dinner services. Ultimately, Johnny's questionable temperament and subpar skills led to his elimination from the show. You completely screwed the kitchen. I'm sure all the ladies heaved a huge sigh of relief. So the man later expressed regret for his actions, acknowledging that he often said things he didn't mean during the intense competition. And I hope for once he was telling the truth. Outside of Hell's Kitchen, Johnny reportedly owns a cookie company in Philadelphia. Hopefully he's learned from his experiences and grown into a more respectful individual. After all, learning from your mistakes is what matters. If you thought Hell's Kitchen couldn't get any crazier, hold on tight, because we've got one heck of a chef to talk about. Jeffrey Dewberry. Let me tell you, this guy was a train wreck in the kitchen. He had a weird vibe from the start, one that he couldn't just shake. During the signature dish challenge, Dewberry served up a baked spaghetti that Ramsey compared to children's food. Gordon's always been a dramatic guy, but man, he really just said that right to Dewberry's face without a second's hesitation, huh? That's just like children's food. Pretty bad. Thank you. Ooh, and then there. Gordon even had trouble pronouncing his name and called him Blueberry. That is kind of a dick move on your end, though, Gordon. I wasn't honest that the restaurant was actually going to open tonight. I literally just wanted to throw up. He really couldn't take the pressure, you see. Things got even worse during the dinner service, though. Dewberry was at the garnish station, but his lack of energy had Gordon calling him a big fucking... 
overgrown muffin. Kind of comic you want from a celebrity chef, right? Well, as the pressure kept mounting, he even tried to quit and walk out of the kitchen, but Elsie's face stopped the tracks. However, Gordon wasn't having any of it, and criticized Dewberry for trying to desert his team. That's some tough love from Gordon, folks. Big overgrown muffin. I think I'll actually side with Dewberry though, cause, I don't know, Gordon's being very aggressive in this one. Maybe, it might be a bit uncalled for, but you all talk in the comments below about it. Sadly, Dewberry was another contestant's first nominee for elimination, and Gordon decided to send him packing. His near quit and lack of resilience sealed the deal, and he knew he deserved to go home. Give me an advantage, and, and that is probably the greatest thing that I had to offer. But hey, story doesn't end there. Dewberry returned for the last dinner service of the season. Ralph picked him last, and you know what? He was fine with it. Dewberry he wanted to do his best for Ralph, but there was one thing he didn't want, the meat station. Can you blame them after the disaster on opening night? Right at the absolute pinnacle stage of service. Not good. In the end, Dewberry had proved that he could bounce back despite all the insults he took throughout his time on the show. Some I absolutely didn't see coming, actually. And in the fierce culinary battleground of Hell's Kitchen, one contestant stood out for his utter lack of empathy and bullying behavior. Season 18 had its very own villain, Scott Lee, whose actions made viewers yearn for his downfall. From the beginning, it was evident that Scott Lee lacked any sense of camaraderie with his team member. When one of his fellow contestants had an allergic reaction, Scott displayed a shocking lack of concern and compassion. His indifference to the potential severity of the situation was chilling as he callously referred to the suffering individual as a baby girl. <laughs> you alright, baby girl? <laughs> Funny. Such insensitivity revealed a disturbing disregard for the well-being of others. Scott's content for his fellow competitors was apparent throughout challenges and punishment. When his team lost a Chinese cuisine challenge, instead of assisting in the penalty, he chose to prioritize his own desire. His selfishness and lack of teamwork further alienated him from the rest of the group. His relentless bullying of Trev McGrath was the pinnacle of his unpleasant behavior as well. While Trev may not have been the strongest performer, Scott's cruel taunts and insults went beyond any acceptable level of competitive spirit. He seemed to relish in belittling Trev, deriving pleasure from asserting dominance over him. My okay. cut and I break, I guess. Scott's negative image extended beyond the confines of the show. On social media, he faced an outpouring of hate and criticism from viewers who despise his behavior as well. The reactions to his tweets showcased just how much the audience loathed him, emphasizing the magnitude of his unlikability. In the end, Scott Lee's journey in Hell's Kitchen revealed he was nothing but a man driven by his own desires and consumed by an unrelenting grudge. The next contestant might just be bordering on a similar personality trait. You see, Lacey D'Angelo is a perfect picture encapsulation of a chef who struggled to rise to the occasion. From her uninspired signature dish to her repeated failures during dinner services, Lacey proved to be a disastrous force in the kitchen, overshadowed by her negative attitude and constant complaining. During the signature dish challenge, her attempt to showcase a chicken and blackberry sauce dish from her corporate dining buffet-style restaurant was met with Gordon's ruthless critique. That's definitely corporate. You serve, they eat. Yes, sir. He spat out her creation, describing it as something that would make diners vomit immediately after eating it. Despite the harsh feedback, Lazy refused to take responsibility for her subpar dish, further cementing her reputation as an unreliable and complacent chef. Throughout the competition, Lazy's attitude rubbed her teammates the wrong way, leading to numerous conflicts during prep and dinner service. Honestly, because I don't have my experience. Even during her second chance in the final dinner service, Lacey failed to redeem herself, and in the end, Lacey stood on Hell's Kitchen painted a clear picture of a chef who was ill-equipped to handle the pressures of a high-stakes culinary competition. I can get back to my normal life. At least now I get some sleep at night. Despite her aspirations, Lacey's time on Hell's Kitchen will be remembered for all the wrong reasons. She failed to prove herself as an even competent or capable chef. Now let's talk about one of the most disrespectful moments in the history of this show. We're diving into the infamous Joseph Tinley, a true rebel without a cause. When it was Joseph's turn to name the first nominee and give a reason, he decided to be a little sassy and took a detour from the expected route. Instead of following the instructions straightforwardly, he said his teammates knew who they were and could speak for themselves. Gordon wasn't gonna let that go though. He pressed Joseph for a proper answer, but Joseph remained defiant. Eventually, he named Tony and Andy as the nominees, but with a touch of defiance still lingering in thoughts. What, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? They know who they As the tension grew, Gordon's patience wore thin. Listen, you chip idiot. I asked for one nominee and why. He even called Joseph slightly stupid and gave him one last chance to answer properly. But Joseph couldn't resist his stubbornness and once again mentioned Tony, claiming he knew the reason why. Not only did Joseph insult Gordon, but he also started insulting his fellow contestants during this chaos. What was up with this guy, really? You want to be an executive chef? Shut yeah? your fucking mouth. Oh my god. 
get it, you like the freaking F word. Gordon, rightfully upset with the lack of respect shown by Joseph, firmly told him that he had overstayed his welcome. It was time for Joseph to leave, and he made his exit in a dramatic fashion. Throughout his whole ordeal, Joseph's half-baked attitude and running mouth were on full display. It was clear that his tough cookie act wasn't impressing anyone, especially not Gordon. Moving on in the cooking world, there was a chef named Suzanne Schlicht, who claimed she could kick anybody's ass in the kitchen. However, her overconfidence and arrogance turned out to be her biggest downfall. Throughout her journey on season six of Hell's Kitchen, it became apparent that Suzanne was far from the culinary prodigy she believed herself to be. From the very beginning, Suzanne's arrogance was on full display during the signature dish challenge. She presented a fontaine risotto, proclaiming it to be absolutely perfect, but Gordon immediately noticed it was overcooked. <laughs> Now, despite the obvious mistake, Suzanne vehemently denied the critique, only to have her idiocracy thrown back in her face when Ramsay spat it out. Her refusal to accept criticism foreshadowed her inability to grow as a chef. Despite her multiple nominations for elimination, Suzanne miraculously survived each time. However, she did face some really hard criticism. You know, I do know how to cook. I do know how to cook meat. I know how to cook every station in how here. How can you say that with a smile on your face? So she did deal with this quite a few times. In the end, Suzanne's journey on Hell's Kitchen was a cautionary tale of how talent alone cannot make a great chef. Which is exactly what this next chef from season two, Sarah Horvitz, needed to know. You see, Sarah left a lasting impression not only for her mean demeanor, but also for her shocking antics, such as ripping her shirt off like the Hulk and sabotaging her own teammate. Get back on the line. I just thought maybe this could be my moment to shine, that maybe I could do something. The memories of her ruthless behavior didn't end there. A Reddit user shared how Sarah was once a bully in school, causing immense trauma to her victims and consistently putting others down to boost herself up. It seems like her toxic behavior was deeply right. She's not a nice person and she thinks she's the shit. She thinks just because she was on TV and who her employer is or was makes her think she's the shit when in actuality she caused me a lot of trauma when I was a kid and she blocked me so I couldn't call her on it. That school I was in with her was a full of a bunch of cowards anyways. She screamed and yelled at me all the time to get the focus off of her, meaning if she yelled at me while snitching on me into the staff that the teachers would take the negative focus off of her. That's like to make me look bad to make her look good. This is what she did on the show because she's a big fat coward. They definitely showed the real Sarah and exposed her for the mean person she really is. Thank you, Hell's Kitchen. Sarah's behavior extended beyond the show as well. In her role as a tour chef for Justin Bieber, she made headlines for being arrested due to an alleged violent altercation with her boyfriend. It became clear that Sarah's actions were not isolated incidents, but rather a pattern of harmful behavior. Her mean-spirited attitude and willingness to inflict pain on others for personal gain persisted both in the competition and in her real life. Despite any potential influence from editing, Sarah's true character shone through, leaving a lasting impression of a contestant who seemingly never changed ways. And now here's one chef who became an unrelenting storm of disrespect at every turn. Raj Branston. As the culinary world witnessed elite talents vying for glory, Raj's presence stood out, not for his culinary prowess or dedication, but for his staggering incompetence. Hailing from Queens, New York, with an impressive 35 years of kitchen experience, Raj's journey on season 8 became a tumultuous tale of continuous disrespect. Right from the start, it was evident that Raj's skills were questionable at best, and during the signature dish challenge, his so-called seafood and vegetable pancake left Gordon bewildered. Yeah, it's a pancake. What? That is a pancake? It's a, yeah. With oil dripping out of the disaster, Gordon quit that it looked like it had gone for a piss. A pancake it was not, and Raj's weak presentation earned him a resounding zero out of one, sealing his fate as the losing contestant in that round. As the competition progressed, Raj's performance failed to improve. Assigned as a waiter during dinner service, he stumbled over explanations of the specials and proved utterly useless in the kitchen. Gordon gave him a choice, either help out in the kitchen or f to the customers and tell them you f***ed it up. I need so I need another jacket. To like in the end, Roger's journey in Hell's Kitchen came to a well-deserved close. Eliminated for being the weakest link and way out of his league, Roger's time in the competition was a lesson in culinary catastrophe. Roger Branson, with his 35 years of kitchen experience, proved that quantity does not necessarily translate to quality. His performance in Hell's Kitchen was an embarrassment, a testament to what happens when someone is truly out of their depth in the culinary world. Next up, though, is Bryant Gallagher. In this particular episode of Hell's Kitchen, things got pretty heated when the blue team lost the Indian Cuisine Challenge. You know how losing can be a real bummer, right? Well, for Bryant, it was way more than that. During the elimination discussions, Bryant got into a huge argument with Aaron and Sade. Dude! Dude, calm down, you ass! 
disrespect here was totally uncalled for. It was a major class of personality. Bryant tried to be all tough and intimidating, but honestly, he just seemed insecure. On the other hand, Sade handled the situation with calmness and clever sarcasm, which made her look like the one who knew what she was doing. She definitely had her act together compared to Bryant, who couldn't keep his cool. It did get kind of funny when Bryant challenged the team to nominate him, saying he could handle it, but Aaron fired back, telling him that his lousy attitude wouldn't cut it as an executive chef. Oh, shut the fuck up! Holy shit! Are we all gonna agree? Like shit. Him and I go. A whole cringe fest is going on here. Brian claimed he was acting like a grown man, but his actions spoke louder than his words. After the episode aired, people on Reddit even made jokes about Brian's meltdown, comparing it to a poor man's Eminem impression in a rap battle. Pretty embarrassing for him and showed a side of him that was immature and temperamental. So, these were some of the most disrespectful moments ever in Hell's Kitchen that have left us at all in disbelief. Showcases a side of the culinary world filled with cringy meltdowns and epic clashes. From Jason Underwood's lack of commitment to the competition to Brian's toddler-esque tantrum, these unforgettable moments have become an integral part of the show's colorful history. Now it's time to hear from you. Which moment was the most disrespectful of them all? Share your thoughts and reactions in the comments below. Oh, and by the way, I got a lot more to share with you about some really unruly contestants. So don't forget to join me on my channel's Discord server for free. And guess what? I even have an exclusive server for those of you who are interested. Well, I'm excited to see you there, but before you leave, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my latest video right here. It's even crazier. See you all next time.